So it's not so surprising to find that uh, um, that uh, the uh, uh, first references to cannabis in the Old Testament actually take place in the form of a holy anointing oil. Now we all know uh, Moses first sees the angel of the Lord in flames of fire from within a bush, uh, um, but that's not really a very academic approach. That's just like you know symbolism and allegory. But uh, um, as I mentioned earlier, in 1936, uh, a researcher, Sula Bennett, said there was a Hebrew word, cannabosum. This means fragrant cane, and sometimes it's been mistranslated in the Bible as calamus. Uh, um, uh, but this is a, a mistaken connotation which ha took place when the Hebrew was translated into uh, Greek and then Latin, a mistranslation. And uh, fragrant cane, it's also translated in as many Bibles, and that's actually a more accurate uh, um, description of what the word cannabis means. Fragrant cane, it's got that long cane-like stalk, that fruiting bud at the top, pine cone-like bud, and uh, that's uh, um, definitely what it means. Now. Um, there were, Sula Bennett wasn't actually the first to come up with this analysis. In 1926, a German researcher, Emanuel uh, Lowe, came up with uh, the same analogy in his book, Die Flower der Juden. And since Sula Bennett's uh, written uh, her, her analysis of what cannabosa means, a number of different academic researchers from different fields have also said, yeah, that's right, that's the right identification. And some of those people include the well-known entheobotanist William M. Bowden, uh, um, Professor Carl Ruck, and Professor Professor Blaise Staples, two of the members of the five-member team that came up with the word entheogen. Uh, Professor Benny Shannon from Hebrew University in Israel has also supported the cannabosum theory. Anthropologist Weston Labar, probably one of the foremost anthropologists in American history, also identified cannabosum as cannabis, as did uh, anthropologist Vera Rubin in her book, Cannabis and Culture. So we can see that there's quite a bit of uh, identification of cannabis with cannabosum. And in this first reference, what happens is God commands Moses to make a holy anointing oil. And this holy anointing oil contains about nine pounds of cannabosum along with myrrh, cinnamon, and other odorous plants mixed into about six quarts of olive oil. And every time that Moses is to speak to the Israelites on, uh, uh, speak to the Lord on behalf of the tribe of Israelites that he represents, he's to cover himself in this anointing oil, place some of this anointing oil on the incense altar, and then he speaks to the Lord in the pillar of smoke over the incense altar. Now, um, THC is fatty soluble, your skin's a big organ, there's uh, lots of references to psychoactive uh, ointments containing cannabis and other substances throughout history, not only in Assyria and Babylonia, but in Canaan. Later on, we have medieval witches' ointments that contain cannabis in them, as well as uh, 19th century occultists' uh, astral traveling ointments that contain cannabis. So there's plenty of historical widespread references to the use of these types of oils. But Moses also burnt some of this oil with the incense on top of the incense altar. And Emmanuel Lowe says the incense itself contained cannabis under the name Hazaret Surur, which means revered essence. And that essence was a name for hashish in the ancient world. So uh, Moses would go inside uh, the tent of the tabernacle, go into the tent of the meeting, and even tightly enclosed structure, cover himself in this oil, burn some of it on the incense altar, and then he would talk to the Lord in the pillar of smoke that rose over the incense altar. Well, what happens in this uh, identification of this scenario is Moses becomes like a shaman who, like shamans throughout the world and even into the modern day, ingests psychoactive substances and interprets they have no idea of receptor sites in the brains and chemicals or stuff like that. This, the, the, they, they felt that the experience that they received themselves was a uh, 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 possession by the Spirit of the Lord in this case. And that the ideas they received in this transition were like uh, divine inspiration and stuff like that. So Moses would go in puzzling on behalf of the Israelites, oh, we're hungry, what are we going to do? And then he'd take the anointing oil and then he'd come back out and says, this is what the Lord your God says. Now, none of the other Israelites ever see the Lord or talk to the Lord, and they can only tell if Moses is talking to the Lord by the pillar of smoke over the uh, incense altar. So this is a, a pretty radical situation. Um, and uh, then we can see where, we, what we can start doing with this now is we don't have to just look for cannabosum references, but any reference to this anointing oil, this particular anointing oil, is going to contain that same recipe. Uh, um, and possibly the addition of mandrake and other plants as mandrake appears uh, in the book of Genesis. They're obviously, obviously aware of the very powerful psychoactive properties of mandrake, as well as the Song of Songs, which uh, makes more reference to the anointing oil and indicates that mandrake, by that time at least, have been combined with 
uh, cannabosum, the cannabis incense. And uh, uh, an interesting scenario takes place too. Like, okay, it should, I should point out too that uh, anybody who made such an anointing oil with cannabis in it, besides the priests, were going to be cut off from their people, which was pretty much a death sentence in the ancient world. You're either going to be up being a slave for another culture, or if you had any wealth or anything, they just take it. You know?